guys, it is Carl Brown with Guitar Lessons 365.com. Got a great song for you today by Allison Change. We're gonna learn how to do Angry Chair. I think it's off of Dirt, and it's just pretty easy song to play. You know, not the solo so much, but the rest of the song, easy riffs, but just creates the coolest vibe. Um, it's gonna be sound best with a couple guitar players here. I know Lane Staley played guitar on this one live as well. Um, so I'll kind of show you what's going on both parts here. Before I get into it, please subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Ring that notification bell, please, so you know I'll release a new video. You can like and comment the videos and help me out a lot here on YouTube. And if you really want to support what I do here on YouTube with all these song lessons and stuff, um, please subscribe to my academy. That is the number one way to, to help out and keep me going here. So the academy gives you full access to all of my guitar courses, including courses on technique, improvisation, ear training, theory, guitar tone, complete guitar tone course with 50 some videos. Um, and also a couple of complete beginner courses too. So if you're just starting out, there's something for you there as well. Um, if you click the link in the, uh, in the description, you'll get a free seven day trial to the Academy. Uh, so you can check out the, all the courses and just see if it's right for you. And even if you don't even use the courses, you'll know that you're really supporting what I do here on, on YouTube. All right, so let's jump into the song. So we're in E flat tuning. So E flat standard. So every string down a half step. I'll put the notes in the description, but that is going to be uh, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, B flat, E flat. All right, so we have this little clean riff that starts at the beginning of the song. Now this is the part that uh, Lane Staley, Staley would play live. <laughs> So um, you can, it's the open E string, then the second fret on the A, then open the E again. Then you play the third fret on the A string, and then you slightly start pulling it up. Just pull it down toward the floor, actually. Just kind of bend it up in pitch. <laughs> Alright, so it's better to do that on guitar, not necessarily like this one which has a floating bridge. So when I start pulling that note, it starts pulling that note that's from the low E that's ringing out of tune a little bit. But uh, so if you have just like a standard um, non-trim bridge, it probably work better. Alright, so live with that, I'm sure obviously Jerry Cantrell plays all everything on the album, but Live, it's Jerry Cantrell that's kind of holding down an E power chord. So remember that clean riff is going with it. Now you can also play that clean riff. I think they might do some a little bit later on in the song anyway, but live is probably going to work just to play both with distortion. Kind of sounds cool anyway. And then we have the part which sounds like a pre chorus to me, even though it doesn't always go to the chorus. It sounds like this. So this riff right here is very Jerry Cantrell-ish to me. Like he doesn't really care if, if he's not trying to impress you with how difficult the riff is. He just wants it to be unique. And that is a very unique riff. That, so it just starts out with basic power chords. It's just an F power chord at the first fret. So first fret on the low E, third on the A, third on the uh, D string. One, two, three, four. And then switch to the E power chord. Open the E string, second fret on the A, second fret on the D. Do that a couple times. Till. Now between those E power chords, you're gonna kind of mute it. And then you jump up here, and here's the odd part. That kind of goes with the vocals, obviously. So that fifth fret on the um, low E string, and slowly bend it up a half step. Okay. 
again. Back to that main riff with the E power chord just letting it ring out and you have that single note riff on top of it. And then back to the same pre-chorus. And then we have the chorus riff that comes in here, which is really cool, kind of just, the song just kind of opens up there, the whole vibe changes, it sounds like this. Just let me say it's just really unique stuff in that one. So we have this A power chord, open A power chord, the B power chord. So it's the power chord off the second fret of the A string. Then the same thing down the power chord built off the second fret of the low E string is the F sharp power chord. And now live and Lane Stanley live would play this, just move this up a half step. And play this as the G power chord. And I believe Jerry Cantrell does a lot too. But on the recording, you can hear an obvious open G power chord. Now what that means is just kind of kind of use a higher voicing of it. Uh, which really opens up, it sounds great in the recording, so I, I like to kind of use that one there. So when I'm doing that G power chord, it's like a G major chord, except you're just omitting the, the A string. So just mute the bottom of the A string with your um, uh, your middle finger. Everything's the same. So we just have this G, D, G, D, G. So all G's and D's. And then back to the A power chord and the B. And then take it to an E major chord. Interesting. And then move up. And do three quick little half step bends off that A again. All right, then we get to the, um, out of that, we get to the pre-chorus again. Of... And then we get to the solo. So this solo, uh, some of it's really difficult to kind of hear. It just kind of just gets lost in the mix. And there's, the, at the, especially at the very beginning, uh, there's, after you do the bends, it's kind of hard to hear exactly what's going on. What he does live, I've noticed the live videos, don't really, for that little section at least, just a quick little couple seconds there, don't really match up with what you hear on the recording. So I'm gonna to try to match what's actually in the recording. Um, it's, there's a lot of noise there, a lot of layers of instruments. So it's kind of hard to hear exactly what it is, but I can hear a definitive little melody in there a little bit. Um, so I'm just gonna to try to emulate that and not try to do exactly like he does live. And then he, after, after that little lick of the solo, and I'll, I'll point that out when it happens, um, then he plays the solo live just like he does on the recording, so uh, we can match all that up. So it sounds like this. Alright, so that's going to start with this bend up at the 22nd fret of the high E and tremolo pick it as you bend it up into this. So that's going to be now. Now it's this part right here, which live I think you will do something like that, but that doesn't really match on the recording. So we have this with this 12, 14 on the D, and let that have some vibrato, and then the open G and B string. So this. Then come down here to the second fret on the D. And then second fret on the G bent up. So as you start bending, 
advantage of that second throw, Najee. He started adding the open B string with. And then slide into the fifth fret on the B while you have the open IE with it as well. And then move that note of the B string down to the third fret. So we have this. All right, then we have this. So we're sliding into some double stops at the 12th fret on the uh, B and the high E string. Into a bend at the 15th fret there on the B. All right, so after you get that bend to the 15th fret on the B, then you do that bend again, and then play 15, 14, 12 on the B and G string. Then bend the uh, 14th fret on the G. Into the B on the, the, the 12th fret on the B and the 12th fret on the high E. And then do a 15th fret bend on the high E string. And then into a, a bend at the 17th fret on the high E string with the, the note. That note on the B string is just so when you do that bend, you're gonna grab this the B string as well. So you got, got both of them. That's what gives it that really kind of dissonant sound. Then down to the 12th fret on the B, quick little trill, and then to a bend at the 15th fret on the B string. So all together we have this. Right? And from there, that's so that's played over the pre-chorus riff, so that little... So we have just kind of the same um, same exact thing. We just have, uh, out of the solo, we have this, you hit that E5 harmonic. And you do a slow bar dive on it while you continue to... same single note riff over it while you do that E5 bar dive. So that comes really coming out of the solo. And then uh, the rest of the song is just riffs we've already covered, that pre-chorus and, and the same chorus. And into the pre-chorus again and then we just kind of have the drums that take the song out. So it's a really unique track and the vocals are just killer. The harmonies are just, just complete, just a really classic by Allison James. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon for guitarlessons365.com.